What to expect after a repot, not an up-pot? That is what I will address in this video. Seeing as there are many different outcomes from a repot, sometimes even with all the best intentions and new root growth, it would appear that the orchid in question is not responding as expected. So to clear up any doubt you may have or put you in the know as to what you can expect to happen after any future repots, I hope that after you have watched this video and or listened to the information, you will be fully equipped to analyze how your orchid is responding to the repot, what to look out for as well as answer the question you may have, when and if you should intervene in case something isn't going according to your expectations. While the intro plays, I would really appreciate you giving this video a thumbs up, thank you, and hopefully I will see you on the other side. It's always awesome to have you on this side of the video. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get to what you can expect after repotting your orchids and why in some cases the reality does not match the expectations. Starting off with my Prostechia cochleata variety lancifolia recently divided, including a huge root ball cleanup that saw the removal of 70% of what were dead and tired roots. Even though some roots were old, they were viable, but removed to give the orchid a good start in her new pot, and the division made it possible to really dig in and clean up. While new roots were growing already, we cannot expect these to already be fully functional to support the structures of the orchid. Leaving 30% of viable roots in the pot, while better than none, it's not enough to sustain all the structures. So, when it comes to dividing orchids, we want there to be as many support structures in the back to help the orchid out at the front while she grows the new roots. In cases like these, you can expect the back structures to shrivel, lose their shine, possibly lose leaves if that is the type of orchid you repotted or are going to repot. Now just because we divided this orchid does not mean that it is the reason for the shriveling of the structures. This is a symptom you can expect after any repot. This can also happen if your orchid just had a root ball cleanup and you potted it up in fresh media. But never forget, just because we have viable roots that go back into the pot, while they help for a certain period of time to help the orchid out, they too may die based on the orchid, genus or hybrid because of the disturbance. We know that some orchids are fussier on the root front than others and possibly will dump their still viable root system within a week of a repot and the new roots are still not able to take over the workload. Eventually, when the new roots do start doing their job effectively, some of the back structures will plump up again. Now, depending on age, the back structures, they may never fully get back to what they were before. There may be wrinkles that won't be ironed out, but that is nothing to be concerned about. Even when the new roots do their job, do not start watering more in the hopes of getting older structures to plump up again. That would pose all sorts of threats to the new roots. Older structures are there to help the orchid out in times of stress, so they may to a certain degree deplete, stay wrinkled, as well as go yellow and completely die off. No panic stations in this situation as long as the front of your orchid, the newer structures are looking as they should. So. Speaking of structures, what you can also expect after a repot is that your next growth is going to be a little smaller. Not something that has to be the case, but if you see your new growth smaller in size, leaves having concertina appearance, more stout or doing something out of the norm like suddenly having two leaves as opposed to the single leaf it always grew, then that is a result of the repot. I always advise to go easy on the fertilizer level post repot Seeing as we depend on the new roots to become the new root system, we should not risk them burning or having salt build up in the pot before they can actually kick into action. So unless you already know your orchid and how quickly the new roots will become active and that your orchid is not prone to dumping its older root system because of the stress the repot pose, the lower fertilizer levels will result in smaller growths post repot compared to the growths pre-repot. In addition to that, be careful repotting when you see new growth starting along with new roots because many times the repot process is radical. In my case, there is a lot of water involved, which puts the new growths at risk of failing. Despite ensuring plenty of airflow around the orchid after the repot, it is possible that the new growth will fail from either being popped off, oh boy, who hasn't done that? 
while handling the orchid or because too much water got into the tight structures. Either way, if the orchid is dependent on that single new growth with the roots growing, then it may result in the orchid getting set back. But more often than not, after a certain period of time, another eye will swell elsewhere and your orchid will be up and running again. Could take up to a year though, which is frustrating, something that you can expect in species. But a lot of the time, a new eye will grow within the same growing season. If this happens, it is truly annoying, but if you happen to have to grow starting with roots when you repotted your orchid, then at least you have that one growth growing for you. Thankfully, that happened to me in my example with the other piece of my prostechia. When I speak of structures, I always feel that the mind wanders to pseudobulbs, but we have monopodial orchids as well. And for that reason, when a repot was more stressful to the orchid than we thought it would be, on a monopodial orchid, the next leaf will either be pinched where the repot happened, it leaves an indentation at the point where it had extended to when the repot occurred, and then when the new roots started to do their job, allowing the leaf to continue with its growth, or the leaf will be smaller. It may have both signs, indentation, as well as end up being smaller. Even without taking notes, an orchid that shows those kind of post-repot results, it is a visual reminder of the repot. The next structure should be back to normal once the regular fertilizer routine has been reinstated. For the most part, some diva orchids may take two structures to get over being disturbed, but each cycle will produce its own set of roots. What you can also expect, unfortunately, is fewer blooms, not as vibrant blooms or no blooms at all because depending on how stressful the repot was, the orchid should not be exposed to the demanding conditions of what it can tolerate prior to the repot. It would then be in a place where it can recover from the repot with bright light but not at the same intensity as before until the new roots take over and do their job. So it is my mantra when this happens to an orchid in my collection that has been freshly repotted that I say, well, it's going to grow roots and that will add to the strength and health of the orchid for the next blooming should she skip this one cycle after the repot. You can also expect some deficiencies to show up as a result of a repot because, once again, the orchid is not able to take up nutrients as per usual. Instead, we have reduced that concentration as well as the supplement concentration. While many of the nutrients are mobile and can be moved from back structures, there are a few building blocks that once in place they will not move around to supply the growing point of the orchid. For that reason, working with the orchid prior to any repot session by applying calcium and magnesium is a wonderful way to prep the orchid for that time period post-repot when you cannot apply high fertilizer concentration. It does not mean that the deficiencies will be avoided, but at least we can work towards a repot a few months in advance to prepare for the months after the repot. Another symptom you may see occurring with your orchid is those wonderful root tips stalling in their growth progress, or they may even stop growing. Never forget that disturbing an orchid is a stressful experience, not only for us, but for the orchid as well. And with that, it is possible, while you did nothing wrong, the orchid is going to stop everything until she has figured out that there is no reason to be concerned for her welfare and she starts to either branch the roots or continues on with the root tips that would appear to have stopped growing. Either way, it is something to be aware of and not to panic. In instances like these, I flush the pot every other day just to keep the humidity high around the base of the orchid so that the roots get the hint all is well and can start growing again. In addition to that, depending on your setup, it is possible that your orchid is not getting enough moisture because the media is not as water retentive as before. So do not forget to flush to keep the humidity high, even with roots that may have stopped functioning in the pot. The focus has to be on cultivating the new roots, so keep the humidity high and flush regularly. The opposite, of course, can happen as well because the roots are not functioning, your media is staying wet for too long. In cases like those, I always say it doesn't matter for the roots in the pot to be too wet, seeing as they are not viable anymore. For the new roots growing into the pot, everything will be just fine, and the new roots, that is really where the focus should be on. Whatever happens in the pot with older, tired roots, they may perish. Our focus 
has to stay on the new routes. However, with all that being said, you can expect everything to also go according to plan. And those symptoms are the new growth is progressing without any indication of stress, even if you cannot monitor your roots. If new growths are progressing as if nothing has happened, then you know that your roots are working just fine. And of course, eventually a new structure will grow where there wasn't one before because the roots are actively growing. This is mainly the case with monopodial orchids because, well, in some cases, monopodial orchids are not growing a new structure or new leaf per se. We've got active root growth. So we do the repot even if we can't see a new leaf. And then afterwards, a couple of months later, the roots are doing fine in the new pot, in the new media, the fresh media. And behold, a leaf starts to grow all good and that's the way uh -huh, uh -huh, i like it uh -huh, uh -huh. this brings me to a favor i ask of you if you have any other symptoms you have noticed with your orchids what they did didn't do or changed up after the stress of a repot please let's continue this conversation in the comments i listed the most common signs to be aware of so that you won't start questioning yourself or the future well-being of your orchid speaking of the future well-being of your orchid let me recommend one more thing after any repot it is best to leave your orchid alone minimal interference with her recovery and only when flushing needs to be done and then do whatever needs to be done but i keep the handle with care thought at the front of my mind and I highly recommend that you do that too. Then put her back in her place after you've had to flush her or do whatever as soon as possible and keep watching how she progresses or maybe stalls. Either way, I would highly recommend to not unpot your orchid thinking that she doesn't like the media or that you would like to change out the mix etc etc. The new roots need to grow long enough. They will adapt to the media and climate of the pot just fine and this can take time. Improvements to the state of a stressed orchid post repot can take as long as six months to show if not longer. So if you are in doubt and think that three months into the time frame after your repot, oh something's not right, she is not responding, I have to change the media, give your orchid time. You will be surprised, everything's going to be just fine. But wait, there's more. If you have any questions, I look forward to being of help in the comments or if you have a specific case you would like to bring to my attention, I will link the Need Help Orchid Details form in the description which answers a plethora of questions I always have before I'm able to say what the best next step would be. In specific cases, without more in-depth knowledge of your conditions and what is not to your liking with your orchid, I am very hesitant to recommend anything. It would be irresponsible of me to just answer in general. I hope that makes sense and I hope that you use this service to your advantage and that of your orchid, so check out that orchid detail details help form. I now hope this video was helpful and that it inspired you to maybe also share it with your contacts and that if you have not been subscribed to the channel before that you are by now. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for watching and for spending time with me on the patio. Have yourself a fabulous day. I attach a condition to that though that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.